Good morning and welcome to the Fellowship One Two Power Three. We're so glad you could join in with us online today. Um, for those who have not been able to see our announcements, we hope we're not overwhelming you, but we will open up again. Our plan is, our prayer is to open up again on July 4th. So we appreciate that every Saturday you've been faithful, you've been joining in, um, and we ask that God will bless you richly just for being so supportive and prayerful with us. We also want to give a quick congratulations to all of the 2020 graduates. Uh, we're excited about the future that God has planned for you. Uh, we know that you are a strong generation with all of the things that you have overcome this year, and we're excited about the answers that he's pouring into your spirit. We also want to wish a happy anniversary to Sydney and Angrid. It was on June 6th, uh, Dr. Miles and his wife. Also, happy birthday to Anquanette. It was on June 12th. Um, we have upcoming birthdays for Tamala and Uncle Mark on June 16th, and an anniversary for Will and Anquanette Griffith on June 18th. So we're really excited about you. Um, and Anquanette, I want to tell you that you do have a jewel in Will because he actually married you right near your birthday. I don't know how many men would put that much pressure on themselves, but that is beautiful. So we are ready to begin with praise and worship. As always, if you know the song, please join in. We have our fellowship ensemble coming up front. And thanks to Sal, as always, he has been so faithful just playing for us and leading us, and we appreciate him. Feel me, oh God. 
to welcome the Spirit of God in this place. consistent and he's so faithful that when we ask him to fill us up he'll do it we appreciate him filling us up this morning right if if you're even online I think you can sense his Holy Spirit is filling us up we've asked him to fill us up and so we recognize he's here so we're going to speed it up a little bit and ask you again to join in as we celebrate his presence being here Presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel him in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is near. The presence of the Lord. Let's go. 
sure. Um, initially, we weren't going to do that rap. I didn't know where that part came from. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> it just kind of welled up in me, huh? <laughs> Sorry, Sal. Poor Sal. <laughs> well, now we're actually going to have our opening prayer and our responsive scripture, and it is going to be led by Atali. And in this book it says, After this man pray ye this. Our Father, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. And as we go into today's first scripture from Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, reading, uh, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created him he them. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And John 20, verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Verse 26, And after eight days, again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Verse 28, And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. Amen. Every commandment hangs on time. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes. I appreciate it. So if you haven't seen on um, Facebook Live, um, we're going to start a series on the five senses of God's presence, enjoying the five senses of God's presence. So if you notice today, Every song is related to touch. Every song is related to touch. Um, Sal asked that we sing this next song, so I'm going to ask everyone to come up before the message and sing, Lord is in your hands. If you know this song at home, please sing along with us. The chorus is really simple. Lord is in your hands, Lord is in your hands, Lord is in your hands. Lord is in your hands. Fellowship.
But by the end, you start saying, wait a minute, I'm okay. It's in his hands. Hey, we get to celebrate. It's in his hands. That's what it is. It's in his hands. Thank you. Don't be sorry. Oh, Lord, I got to watch that. Oh, Lord, man. Got me up here moaning. Thank you. It's in your hands. I love y'all. Everybody on Facebook, whoever joins in on YouTube, we appreciate you. And we don't take you for granted, okay? Amen. Um, so we're excited about what God has to say and what he has for us to do on today. What he has to say and what he has for us to do um, on today. Amen. And we're noticing that a lot has happened in these last two weeks. Like the last time we got together, who would have thought that we would have to do all that we had to do over these last two weeks? Um 2020 has been something else when we came in with COVID-19 um, and now we're having to um, repeat and remind that Black Lives Matter. So who would have thought that we would be where we are today? Amen. And one thing that I love about God, I'm getting ahead of myself, this isn't e even in the message um, till later, but his timing is always perfect. Yes. It's always perfect. Absolutely. So he'll give me this topic and he'll give me this scripture. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, it's going to be like that. Okay, God, I got it. And it's nothing like what I thought My it was going to be like. So I thank him that he is totally in control. Um, yesterday and today, Sal was leading the prayer and he was talking about the sermon, how God leads him and shows him, you know, do you mind me sharing? I'm sharing your te Robin said I'll be sharing people's testimonies. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, but he was, <laughs> she, she told me stop telling everyone else. <laughs> Thank you, Sal. I don't mean to harm. No but, you know, just the way God uses him and also the way that he uses me. And he'll say, okay, Jenny, um, this is now. He gives me a little bit because he knows I'll jack it up if he gives me too much. So I thank God that he's in control. Let's pray real quick, okay? Let's pray. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you with thanksgiving and praise. You're here. We thank you so much that everything's in your hands, God. We thank you so much that you filled us up, Father God, and we're now overflowing, Lord. We praise your holy and righteous name, God, and we pray that, as always, you would forgive us for anything we said or done that, or thought that was wrong. I personally ask for forgiveness, for giving into distraction, and sometimes, Lord, the distraction is me. I start worrying about things, Father God, and getting concerned and not realizing that everything is in your hands. If I'm a sing it, Father God, I need to show it. If I'm a show it, God, I got to believe it. If I'm a believe it, Father God, I got to live it. So I confess that to you today, Father God, and I thank you for your correction, God, and I thank you that you're in control, and I thank you, God, that you're answering so many prayers today, Lord. We thank you for your word that's about to go forth, Holy Spirit. We thank you that you have written it and that you will deliver it through me. We're your vessels, God. We're here to serve you, and we're excited about what you have to say, Lord. Bless this place, Father God, not just this physical place, but even those online, Father God, those in the spiritual world, Father God, and draw us, draw us near to you in Jesus. 
Jesus' name. We love you. We praise you. We're excited about what you have to say in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. 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 Y'all know I, I forget where I am. Sometimes, sometimes God and I, we have our moment. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. <laughs> so it's interesting. Um, the Lord gave us two strong, unpredictable messages during the last two services. Two very strong uh, messages that we needed to hear before all that has transpired happened. And two unpredictable messages because, again, he went in a direction I didn't think he was going to go in. One that I said, okay, well, he's giving me this. This is where we're going to go. And he'll take it and go in a totally different way, right? So he did that. The first one um, that we talked about, remember last time we were together, we talked about the revival of unperverted love. The revival of unperverted love. And so we talked about that every commandment hangs on love. Amen. And we're supposed to love God with our all and our neighbor as ourself, right? Amen. That was the last time that we came together. Who would have known we would need that for now, right? Well, before that, we started talking about the love, the mercy, and the wisdom of forgiveness. Yes. God is in yes. control, right? Yes. It really is in his hands. That's oh, something goodness. to celebrate. Who would have known that we would need this word for now, for Amen. today, oh, right? God. Only God. God. Amen. Yes. Amen. I think we might be running around here today. Um, so y'all excuse us if we run. I'm seeing some runners <laughs> in the front. So I'll be ready. <laughs> Amen. Oh, wow. Amen. Look, he, he's like, okay, oh, he's ready. ready. <laughs> he's been waiting to run. <laughs> Praise God. And so, you know, but who would have known that? Um, who would have learned about um, love and forgiveness on that line or in the way that God presented it? And so then he gave us this, this other title, Enjoying the Five Senses of God's Presence, Beginning with Touch. Mm -hmm. Enjoying the Five Senses of God's Presence, Beginning with Touch. So when God gave me this sermon series title, I was thinking, okay, senses. What are the five senses, God? I got it. We got touch. We got smell. We got taste. We got sight. We got hearing, right? Yes, That's yes. the five senses. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I said, okay, Lord, well, this is going to be easy, right? I started looking through scriptures. I was like, oh, yeah, Psalm 119. I sent it out to Music Fellowship. Hey, y'all, make sure you meditate now. I said, meditate, and it's the longest psalm. So if you did it, I'm proud of you. If you didn't, I understand. It's the longest psalm in the Bible. It's a long one, right? Yes, it's written according to the Hebrew alphabet. I don't know if y'all knew that. So every letter of the Hebrew alphabet, each part of that scripture starts with that. So I said, oh, yeah, Lord, this covers all five senses. This is simple. As a matter of fact, we don't have a Bible study. If you look on Facebook, look at our events. We got a schedule. Psalm 119. And the Holy Spirit right. said, no. That's not what you're going to preach from. I said, oh, okay. So then I started reading some other verses. And I said, okay, well, surely, Lord. It was almost like um, when Samuel went to, to pick King David. Mm -hmm. And he said, surely, Lord, this is the one. And God said, no, I, I got something else planned for you. I said, okay, okay, um, that's, that's fine. And again, what I love about God is he gives me just a little bit right before. He gives me a, a snippet of, a, almost like a sneak preview. This is what we're going to talk about. But he doesn't give me enough to mess up his message. Uh, Sometimes we want to take the ball and run, right? Uh, those yes. who play football or basketball, you, you know what I'm talking about. He's, he's always surprised that I know about sports or, or real life. I know real life style. But, you know, but someone passes you the ball, what do you do? You take the ball and you run with it and you try to get a touchdown, right? Or you try to make a hoop or something like that, okay? But God doesn't let me hold the whole ball. He'll, he'll just give me a little bit. And then on that day, he keeps the ball and then he scores, praise God. Right. He, he scores. That way we, we definitely make the touchdown and we, we definitely make the hoop, right? Because right. any of y'all know I'm, I'm not athletic anyway, so we ain't going to make no touchdown with me having the ball physically, okay? But God, the Holy Spirit, he does it every time. I love that. And, and so then um, after he gave me the, the verses, I thought, okay, this is going to be a very soft, soft sermon. And it's going to be like the type where you hear the birds um, singing and sal on the violins. And I said, oh, this is going to be soft. And God still said no. As a matter of fact, when I sent the recording to Robin, and I said, Rob, could you do the recording so that people you know, will hear the announcement? And I said, you might want to have some waves in the background and some birds, not hawks, not, not any rough <laughs> birds, but the little sweet birds in the background. And God said, that's not what I have for you to do today. So I said, okay, Lord, um, so today you got to see where God is coming from. You got a sneak peek. I don't know if you caught it, 
when he was talking about his touch. But we started with Genesis 127, right? And this is Genesis 127, but also Genesis 2 and 7. It says, so God created man in his own image. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And then when we go down to Genesis 2, 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That's what it said, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about God's touch, right? Enjoying the presence, the five senses of God's presence, okay? So that was only at the beginning. This is in Genesis. This is the first and second chapter. We're not even into John yet, right? And God is already making it plain that he made all of us, okay? All right. So I understood what God was reminding us of at that point. He made us. He made us who we are. Did y'all realize that? Yes. I think we take that for granted, that he made us who we are. Um, and not only did he make us, but he made all of us. And not only did he make all of us, but he made all of us from dust. That's right. From dust. My God. The only one superior to us is God. <laughs> the only one we're inferior to is God. Basically, we're all dust. Now, he's creative enough that I'm not sneezing when you come in the room. I ain't wiping down the floors. That's how creative God is. He took dust and he, he made us. Mm -hmm. Yes. So while we're sitting here, what I'm finding is that we matter to God. Did y'all know that? We matter to God. We're sitting here. It's, it's unfortunate, and some of us are even uncomfortable. We're looking at the state of affairs, and that some uh, Christians actually have problems recognizing and embracing the fact that black lives matter. Mm. Yet God just said it here. Amen. He said he made us in his own image. So why do we got to question it? Why is it a question? Why is it a debate that black lives matter? Do you understand what I'm saying? So then I understood why we had to talk about touch today. At first, I didn't get it. I thought it was going to be flowery. I thought it was going to be sweet. I thought it was going to be nice and calm. But no, God has a point to make today. And sometimes this point is strong, right? Yes. I think um, the word is supposed to cut going in, and it cuts going out. That's right. And that's the type of word he gave us today. Um, so I realized that and I thank the Holy Spirit because here I noticed, does anyone see black or white? It didn't say he made white folks in his own image or black folks in his own image. That's right. He said he created man in his own image. Pull it up on your Bible just to make sure I didn't make that up. You know, sometimes T will check me. She'll say, okay, that was right. You typed it because my typing is off sometimes, right? Make sure y'all check me. That's it's is that on point? Do you, oh, Brenda's it's got her Bible. Yes, she got the right, old-fashioned yes, kind. The yes, kind is big and yes. probably got names and highlights in there. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> she got it open. She got it open. It says that. It says God did not seem to, if, if you notice, he did not focus on color. He didn't tell us what color Adam and Eve were. Did y'all catch That's that? Right. We don't know what color they were. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. No. And we shouldn't really care. All we need to know is we're made in his image. Amen. And then it said, he breathed into them the breath of life. Okay? So I started to wonder and ponder, where would God go from here? Then I went over to John 20, 24 to 29, because I couldn't get this song out of my head. There's a song um, Kirk Franklin used to sing, and it said, let me touch you and see if you're real. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And John 20, 24 to 29, Tiga read it. I'm going to read it again. Again, y'all check me on it. Make sure my verses are right. It says, one of the 12 disciples, Thomas, his nickname was the twin, okay? Or Tiga read it Didymus because that was a different version. And it says, but he wasn't with the others when Jesus came, okay? They told him, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Ain't that something? So you're coming to me. You're excited. Guess what? We saw Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't going to believe that. Till I see the Jesus keep me near the cross. Mm. Mm. Till I see the nail wounds in his hands and put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound mm -hmm. in his side. Well, eight days later, the disciples were together again. I love Jesus because he doesn't have to entertain us. 
He didn't have to show up again and, and prove to him that this was that he was real and that he was risen. Mm -hmm. Yet he accommodated him, right? Yes, he, he said, okay, I'm going to let him see me just to, to let him know, yeah, I rose again, okay? So eight days later, it says the disciples were together again. And this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked. Pay attention. The doors were locked, y'all, okay? But suddenly, as before, yes. Jesus was standing among them. My and and that's why oh God is, God. Jesus is amazing. Uh, first, he greeted them with peace. He said, peace, peace be with you. And then he said directly to Thomas. Y'all remember what Thomas said? This is what Jesus, I love Jesus. This is what Jesus said to Thomas in verse 27. He said, put your finger here and look at my hands. Mm -hmm. You remember what Thomas said? He said, I'm not going to believe it until I touch it with my, yes. my own yes. hand, right? Yes. Jesus called him out on it. Here I am. Here I am, he said. Go ahead and, and, and put your finger here and look at my hands. And then y'all remember what uh, Thomas said as well. Thomas also said, um, well, I ain't going to believe until I can put my hand in his side. I don't know if I just said Peter. Y'all forgive me. We're talking about Thomas. And so uh, and he said, put your hand into the wound in my side. And then he said, don't be faithless any longer. <laughs> believe. Let me read that again. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. And then verse 28 says, here's what Thomas said. My Lord and my God. Yes. Thomas exclaimed. Yes. Can y'all imagine Jesus coming to you after you done told the disciples, the other ones? Oh, I ain't going to believe that. Yeah, I, mm -mm, I don't think y'all saw the right one. I don't know that that was Jesus. I ain't going to believe it till I touch him. And Jesus shows up and calls you out. All, all, all Thomas could say was, my Lord and my God. He was probably speechless, right? And then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me, but blessed are those who believe without seeing me. That means we're blessed, y'all. Yeah. That's what yeah. it means, right? We're yeah. talking about the touch, right? Enjoying the five senses of God's presence. Well, suddenly... As I was reading, and I couldn't get it out of my mind, I kept trying to understand why, God, though, are you starting with touch? I don't get it. Why are you talking about um, the sense of touch? Why would you start with the sense of touch? And then I realized now with what's going on, um, basically, we need a touch. Yes. yes. <laughs> we need yes. a touch. Yes. That's why he's talking about touch. We need a touch, and we need to touch him, and we need to see if he's real. That's what Thomas was saying. Lord, I, I need to touch you. I need to know that you're real. We do the same thing. Right now, we need a touch. And not only do we need to touch him, but we need to be touched by, by thank you, thank you. by yes. him. Yes, Lord. Let him touch us too, yes, right? Lord. Wouldn't it be something? Thank you, Holy Spirit. I love God's sense of humor. This came to me. If, if Jesus said, well, let me touch you and see if you're real. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Let's get back on the paper. <laughs> You never know what he's going to know. So one thing that I found out about God's touch, and, and I love it, is God's touch makes us whole. It's guaranteed to make us whole, right? Amen. So with God's touch, um, we'll be whole. With God's touch, we'll be healed. That's what his touch does, right? When he touches, we're going to go through some examples of this. So he makes us whole. Um, he heals us. Um, and then he also gives us some power. Mm -hmm. yes. That's his touch. Yes. That ain't my touch. There you go. Don't get it twisted. Mm. You know, God has given me the, the, the gift of powerful praying. Um, nine times out of, sit, uh, out of ten, whenever I pray, it comes to pass. But what I want you to understand is it's not me. Mm. Okay. Yes. Let's get that straight. Now, not only do I want you to know it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit, but you have access to. Amen. The same yeah. prayers. Because a lot of people will call and they'll say, Nisha's gesturing now. Sis, I need prayer. I might get a text, you know, from Sal. He's, he, he don't call, hey. I'm like, oh, all right. In the name of Jesus. Y'all know I'll text a prayer. <laughs> I will text. I will email. I'll be walking between patients. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, I need you to handle this right now. Make sure. That she, okay. And then what y'all know, one thing that my uh, evangelist sister has taught me is to end it with, it is so. She don't even know she taught me that. She well, taught me that. But we all have that same access to his touch. And once we have God's touch in our lives, we're whole. We're healed. We have power, right? Wonder working. 
power. Praise God. But the other thing that I found out is while we can touch godly things, remember, there's some things we can touch, but there's some things we're not supposed to touch. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so he says that we can touch the godly things, right? We can touch the, the godly things, and we'll talk a little bit later in reference to the godly things, like the hem of Jesus' garment. Mm -hmm. We can touch that. Uh, we can touch the clean things. Remember that. We can touch the clean things. We can touch the godly things. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, when you're touching something, I want you to categorize it. Is it clean or is it unclean? Okay, that's all I'm going to say there. Amen. All right, thank you, Jesus. So we can touch that. And when we touch the Lord, it gives us this chance to be made whole. When we touch the things of the Lord, it also gives us this chance to be made whole, right? Mm -hmm. Praise God. It gives us this opportunity to be healed when we touch God and the things of God. Thank you. The Holy Spirit is in my ear today because he's also letting me know sometimes the things of God um, may seem like they're from men. We've been having this mass debate, right? But even though it's proving that the six feet in the mass works, that would be a thing of God, okay? Now, the unclean things, not using your sanitizer, <laughs> okay? He's trying to heal you. He's trying to keep you whole. But sometimes we want to prove a point instead of doing what God is telling us to do. Thank you, Lord, for letting me say that. So we can, we can touch clean things, and we, have, we can not touch the unclean things. But not only is there power, power, wonder, work, and power in his touch, through the blood of the lamb, but there's something about us touching him. What God allows us to touch, he allows us to touch his being, his person, his reality, right? His Holy Spirit, his presence. Anyone ever get that tingling feeling? Yes. Yeah, that's the Holy Spirit. You ever had that thing where you say something told me? Yeah. That's the Holy Spirit. I don't know why we won't give him credit. We act like saying Holy Spirit is scary. Oh, little stuff. No, the Holy Spirit told you don't go down that road, and that's the reason that you didn't get into that accident. No, the Holy Spirit told you don't make that call, and that's the reason you didn't get caught up. Nope, the Holy Spirit told you you might want to miss that trip, and that's the reason you weren't in that plane. That went down. That's the Holy Spirit's Amen. touch. Let's clarify this today and give him credit instead of saying something. He's more than something, right? That's right. Amen. 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 Mm, he's coming with boldness today. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and so, so, so that's the thing that we have to realize is that he allows us access to him, to touch him, and to be in touch with him. That in itself is a blessing, but I think we take it for granted when we try to take things into our own hands. Yeah. When we try to ignore, distrust, or dismiss his touch, we take it for granted. <laughs> Um, the question came to me, is there a time for action, though? Is there a time for action? So don't misunderstand what's being said. There is a time for action. All I'm saying is to make sure that we are in touch with the Lord, no matter what action we're taking, okay? Make sure that we're in touch with the Lord and we're being touched by the Lord and we're touching the Lord before we take action, during the action, and yes. yep, even after. Don't yeah. drop them off. Mm -hmm. Don't drop them off. <laughs> Lord, I need you to fix this. I got it now. Lord, I need you to help me. All right, we good now. Lord, thank you for the victory. All right, I'm going back over here. Okay, there's a time for action, but we have to have his touch involved in whatever that action is, okay? We have to make sure that we're in touch with him so that we know what he wants us to do so that guess what? So that we don't mess it up. Sometimes not only do we mess it up for that person, and now I'm talking about revenge, but sometimes we mess it up for ourselves. What's your witness saying? Yeah. Remember what we said earlier in the joke? What if God said to us, let me touch you and see if you're real? Mm -hmm. Well, we passed the test. Mm -hmm. Now I'm talking about me, so don't be getting all upset <laughs> and uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm talking about Jenny Wright, Virginia Frederica Wright, okay? So y'all know which one. <laughs> if he touches me, am I real? Am I really his Jesus. or am I front? Yes. Mm, good God from Zion. Mm -hmm. Another song that was dropped in my spirit, and my church aunt used to sing it, Aunt Betty. And she used to sing this at St. Paul Baptist Church when I was a little girl. I know Dad and Robin remember this. The Sin Singers used to sing this. Um, it was actually originally sung by Andre Crouch. Mm -hmm. And it was called, Oh, It Is Jesus. Yeah. Okay? And, and Aunt Betty was saying, I tried all I could. Yes. Seems like nothing. <laughs> 
did me any good. Y'all know this song. Then I heard Jesus. He was passing by. And then I decided to give him a try. Praise God. Uh, then the sin singers would back her up with, oh, it is Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the hem of his garment. Hallelujah. And his blood has made me whole. That's what I'm talking about. The, 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 the power of that touch. That blood, it makes us whole. I feel it right now. I'm yes. trying to stay calm, but I'm about to jump in about 10 seconds. Thank you, Jesus. So that song also was in my spirit, and, and, and that was deep in my spirit. I mean, I was a little girl when they used to sing that song, and I would just close my eyes, and Aunt Betty would be singing that song. I tried all I could. Yes. Good God from Zion. But it was something about touching the hem of his garment, and that's what made her whole. Thank you, Lord. So that was there. So remember what we said. Um, there are some things that we need to touch, right? Um, yeah, I haven't forgotten about the unclean things. I know we don't want to hear about it, right? We don't want to hear about the things we can't touch because it's not just the unclean things, but we're also not supposed to touch God's anointed. Hmm. No. We're, also not, we're also not supposed to touch those who are separated unto the Lord. Now, what's interesting to me, and again, I love how God doesn't give me enough time to mess up his message. Um, I couldn't understand. I said, Lord, that looks like an extreme. Doesn't that look like an extreme? Anointed belongs to God. Unclean, we ain't supposed to touch. So why would God have both of those as things that we are not supposed to touch? How you touch. Not just how, sis, but he's handling that. That's right. He's handling that. Yes. That's why we don't touch God's anointed, and that's why we don't touch unclean things. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for holding that. He didn't give it to me early. He waited. He said, no, she's going to mess that up, so I'm going to go ahead and wait till about a day or two and give it to her. That's why we can't touch those things, right? Uh, uh, so both are left for his handling, but if you don't believe it, because some people hear the sayings and we're like, what's that really a verse? Or does somebody make that up? Is someone just trying to one-up somebody by saying you can't touch my anointed? So I got news for you. Not only is it in one scripture, thank you, Jesus, but it's in two. Yes. Check me on it. Check me on it. Psalm 105.15 and First Chronicles 16.15. 22. I, I'm going to read it here because I had to type it out here. It says it real simple. It's real real clear. It says, saying, touch not mine anointed hmm. and do my prophets no harm. Sometimes we wonder, is that made up? It's not. It's in the word. It's a commandment. Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. So there's some Things There's some people, um, those who have been anointed by God, were not supposed to touch. Good God from Zion. So if you go to the Old Testament, y'all know I love the Old Testament, so you knew it was coming. Read about King David and King Saul. That's King right. David had the chance more than once yes. to kill King Saul. More than once. But King Saul was anointed. So King David... Couldn't kill him. And that's what I love about God. When he would test um, David, David would pass the test. It was easy for him to kill him. Like, I'm going to tell y'all in summary a little bit about um, 1 Samuel 24, 1 to 13, when David had the opportunity to kill King Saul. See, King Saul was relieving himself. So y'all know what that means? He was going to the bathroom. Yeah, that's right. They went to the bathroom in the Old Testament. Sometimes, <laughs> don't they? Yeah, he was going to the bathroom. Now, and I'm guessing he might have been doing more than number one. I don't want to gross you out. But he was doing enough so that King David had a chance that he could have killed him. Okay, mm -hmm. he had a chance that he could have taken his life. So um, King Saul was going to the bathroom, right? And, and they went to the bathroom and King David had the chance to take his life. Um, then another time, um, so the first thing he did, thank you, Holy Spirit, is he crept up on him with his servant. And he took a little bit, he cut a little bit of his robe so King Saul would know he was there. And he held it up and called out to King Saul. And that's when King Saul said, you're better than me, because he could have killed him. Think about it. When he was on the toilet, or whatever it was then, that they were, how they went to the bathroom, I'm going to guess his soldiers weren't in there. Those are private moments, right? So that means that no one would have been there to protect the king. 
Yeah. But King David was stealth. He could sneak up on him and he didn't even know it, right? Okay. He was stealth. He snuck up. Okay. I mean, came back out. Hey, look what I got here. I could have taken your life. Now, I remember that story, but what I didn't realize until I read 1 Samuel 26, 7 to 20, um, he also snuck up on, on King Saul when he was sleeping. He was asleep. Read about it. So he had the power to take his life. Who's going to wake up? Y'all know King David. Remember who? That man was bad. He was so bad that um, when he was called, Samuel said, I don't think that's him. He was running. He was out running with bears and lions and killing animals with his hands. That's why he couldn't build the temple, right? Because he had had all that blood on his hands. Remember, he's the one who killed Goliath. <laughs> and he taught junk on him. Goliath was like, oh, what y'all come with little dogs coming at me like that? Come on now, son. Okay, I'm putting it in today's language. <laughs> All right? <laughs> they might not have said it that way. And then King Dave said, well, you might come with that, but I yes. come in the name of the Lord. That's right. And mm -hmm. took a stone. Something as simple as a stone. Yes. It, it dislodged into Goliath's head. He fell out, and King David cut his head off. That was a bad man right there. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, and that was in his boyhood. He wasn't even a man yet. How do we know it? Because read about it. Remember King Saul tried to give him his armor and it was too big? He said, no, nah, no, nah, I got to work with what I'm used to. My rocks. He got his rocks, but even more than that, he was used to the Lord. He was used to God's touch. And he did it in order. He did it in God's order. And, and the other thing that happened, um, the other thing that happened for, for King Saul, King Saul, when he was first called, 1 Samuel 10 and 1, when he was first called, he was anointed, right? Now, King Saul looked like a king. If you read yes. deeper into that story, you understand why Samuel was confused about David being the king. Because David had some older brothers that looked more like the king than he did, right? Mm -hmm. and, and King Saul, when you read it, he was handsome, he was, he was stately, even though he was from the smallest tribe. He was from uh, Benjamin, right? But, but he looked like a king, and he had gotten anointed, and he danced. Y'all remember when he got anointed? Um, but he, then he even had that. Well, I don't know if I'm supposed to be the king, but he was, and he was anointed, okay? So remember that he was anointed, um, and it was revealed to Samuel the prophet, which is referred to here as the seer, that King Saul would be the first king. My goodness, this is going into Bible study <laughs> because they wanted a king. I don't even have that on there, but I guess God wants us to be sharing this. They wanted a king, remember? The Israelites, they didn't want just prophets. They wanted a king. All, all, right. all the other people had kings. How come we can't have no king? <laughs> right? So God was saying, y'all going to regret that, but okay. He still honored their request. And the next thing you know, here comes King Saul as the first king, right? So Samuel anointed him as God appointed him to rule, but Saul got comfortable. He started doing things his way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Started doing things his way. He didn't completely follow what God told him to do in war. Um, he kept the best and the king of the Amalekites. Now, I love how God does this. I told you he's so in control. A day or two ago, we're reading our daily bread, and here comes the story about the Amalekites, which I didn't realize but these are the ones that the Israelites had gone against when Moses' arms were tired. Remember Aaron and her had to hold up his arms? Because every time his arms were held up, they would win. And when they would fall because he was tired, um, they would start losing. So they got a little rock and they set Moses on that rock. And then both of them on each side held his hand. That's the Amalekites that now King Saul is fighting. And he was supposed to destroy it all. All of it. The king and everything, right? Not, okay, go in. Now I want you to get the best. And then the way that he, King Saul was a trip. The way he justified it was, well, Lord, I was going to give you the best. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. And this is where the scripture comes where it says, obedience is better than sacrifice. If God is telling you to do something, do it. Go Amen. by his touch. Okay? Not by what you think you need to do. Oh, well, God's going to be pleased because I'm going to give him this lamb. He told you to kill the lamb. Why do you even got the lamb over here? And that's what Samuel said. What's all the bleeding? B-L-E-A-T-I-N-G that I hear in my ears. When he said, oh, oh. And then not only did Saul do that, he blamed the people. Lord have mercy. Yes. He said, the people you gave me, they told me to. I just said, now he's a king. He's a king, but he sounds like a kid at this point, 
right, That's right. the people you gave me, and then I was bringing the best, and then, and guess who ended up having to kill the king? Samuel, the prophet. Touch not mine anointed, <laughs> nor do my prophets any harm, right? And as Samuel was walking away, by the time we get to 16, 14, now remember, King Saul is anointed, right, in 10, 1. By the time we get to 16, 14, Samuel's walking away. His robe is dragging. And the next thing you know, Saul rips off a corner of his robe. Hmm. Samuel said, the way you rip that off, that's how the kingdom's going to be torn from me. Touch not my anointed, nor do my prophets any harm. And yet, and yet, here comes David, the next in line, anointed, ready to be king. Two times he could have taken Saul's life, but he didn't. And he even told his soldier, uh-uh, don't touch him. That's for God to handle. Yes. That's for God to handle, okay? We're talking about enjoying the five senses of God's presence and his touch. But the other thing the Holy Spirit was showing me was what about the anointed? What about the way we act? What about the way King Saul was acting? He wasn't acting anointed. That's right. That's it. Let God touch us and see if we're real, right? He wasn't acting anointed. Uh, he was touching things he wasn't supposed to be touching. And sometimes we do that too. We're anointed and we feel like we got a badge, we got special honor. I am anointed. Like we should have an A <laughs> right on our chest, right? Da -da 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 -da. Anointed is here. No, that means you got a responsibility. <laughs> I'm just saying what I'm saying. I used to do it. Well, you know I'm anointed. They better back up. Okay. Well, what about the times when somebody didn't have to back up? When I was touching some unclean things, I love it how God uses me. He puts all my business out there. You think your business out there? Okay. I was touching some unclean things before too. And God had to check me Amen. on that. Okay? And that's the thing. As anointed, we have a responsibility. If we are anointed, if we are prophets, prophetesses, we have a responsibility. Not just to show up and be like, I'm anointed, honor me, you know, don't touch me, <laughs> you know? Amen. We have the responsibility to represent for Christ. That is why he anointed us, to set us apart for him and for him to use, right? Amen. Although we are still uh, protected, we still have a responsibility. Not that we're supposed to be carrying this flag or banner or cape around, this flowing in the wind when we come through and the lights on the A on our chest start flashing, you know, and there's thunder and lightning. Like, no. If we are anointed, we're supposed to be acting anointed. And thank you, Holy Spirit. That anointing means meek. Amen. It means mild. It means humble, right? Not, excuse me for using an old term, braggadocious, right? <laughs> We're not supposed to have that. We're supposed to be humble and meek and mild and act or rather be anointed. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we have a responsibility. Uh, we're not supposed to use the power that God has given us by his anointed anointing and be touching unclean things and thinking we're going to get away with it. That's and right. we all know what unclean things are. I'm not going to go there. We're adults in here, okay? But y'all know what we've been touching that we weren't supposed to be touching. We. Not you, not just me, we, okay? Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we know that um, as anointed, we're supposed to be practicing some kind of restraint, right? Mm -hmm. We're supposed to have self-control. We're supposed to have prayerful power. Um, and not just for us, thank you, Lord, but for everybody. When he calls the anointing, it's not just about me. Amen. I got to cover you and you and you and you and us, okay? <laughs> and then you got to cover me and them and us. And then they got to cover you and us. We're all in this together. That's Amen. why we have that anointing. That's why you have the discernment. You know, one thing I love, I, I'm sorry I keep telling you business, so I think this might be the um, last time, the last one today, the last one this minute. Okay. But one thing about Sal, Sal won't be lying under the anointing. Thank you, Lord. Sal's real humble with it. You know, um, you'd be amazed when this man prays with power. Oh, my goodness. You almost want to fall out, but he never comes in like, I'm here. Y'all ready to pray? He doesn't come in popping his collar. Okay? He's humble. And I say, Sal, uh, Sal can you um, pray? And he'll take his hat off and 
Okay? And next thing you know, you're like, oh, wait a minute, get the prayer blanket. I'm about to fall out. Amen. That man is humble, but he's powerful. That's anointing. Praise that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. just, just so y'all know, that's what it looks like. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. So, so sometimes we have to check ourselves and make sure that we're acting anointed, right? Mm -hmm. We have a problem when other people can't tell we're anointed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the things that he told us not to touch, okay? Uh, not just the, the adult things, but let's just talk about little things like, um, I don't know, cursing people out. <laughs> I don't know, getting an attitude. I don't know, ignoring the call God's telling you to pick up, but picking up the one he told you not to pick up. Okay, no. thank you, Jesus. Y'all get the point by now, right? Yes. Remember his anointing. It's something that we can't touch, but we need to be. I hope that's clear to you. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that we stop playing with the unclean things. I, you know, God gave me another visual how um, sometimes not only do we touch it, but we start tossing it back and forth. <laughs> it's unclean. Leave it alone. We have to make sure that we operate under his anointing, but also that we respect those who are anointed. That being, thank you, Holy Spirit, those who may be in a backslidden state, we can't touch them. We have to let God handle it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're like, that person ain't living right, though, Lord. Mm -hmm. King Saul, he was, it didn't say that he wasn't anointed any longer. It said the kingdom was taken from him. Mm -hmm. And then what ended up happening is he ended up in suicide, right? He wanted his soldier to kill him because the enemy was on his back. Y'all remember? That's mm. right. Okay, y'all check me if I ain't telling it right. And then the soldier said, I can't, I gotta honor you. He took his own life at the end. Started out as a king, anointed, and ended up taking his own life. Lord, have mercy. We don't want that. That's not what God wants for us, mm -hmm. right? He wants us to live right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So if you're anointed and you're not living right, get it right today. Don't keep doing that. Please don't play with the Lord. Please. Yes. He's not a pump. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. so, so sometimes um, we kind of go backwards or go our own way because we feel like God's touch hasn't touched us soon enough. Right? Mm -hmm. So we start to worry about the delay. We despair about the delay. Well, again, as God would have it in his perfect timing, we were studying the book of Daniel. He's amazing. We're studying the book of Daniel, and we got through um, a couple of chapters. We're not to the end yet. I think we stopped on chapter 9, right, Tegan? Mm -hmm. Chapter 9. But before that, we found out that Daniel had been fasting and praying. Y'all know how we have that 21-day fast, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, he had been fasting 21 days, and then Gabriel came down and answered his prayer. Right. 21 days. And, and it's so neat because he tells the story, Gabriel is telling the story about how he basically had to tag team with Michael because there was demonic warfare going on, mm -hmm. okay? The prince of Persia was keeping Gabriel from coming down to Daniel to deliver the answer to his prayer, right? Yes. And so he had to, Michael had to come, he had to tag team and Michael had to handle that. So Gabriel could come down yeah, and answer really Daniel's, is that not heavy? Mm -hmm. But sometimes we don't feel God's touch, and we feel like he ain't moving fast enough. Now, the word says, thank you, Holy Spirit, when Daniel was fasting, not only did he turn down his plate, he didn't even put lotion on. That's a whole nother level. <laughs> okay? Read about it. It's funny, when you do the deeper study, you're like, wait a minute, he ain't no lotion on? The man was serious about that, like, I ain't putting on no lotion, I ain't eating none, I'm going before the Lord, it's going to be 21 days, or however long it takes, he probably didn't know. Three weeks, three weeks, he fasted and waited for an answer. We can't wait one day. Lord, I asked you for this yesterday, how come it's not here today? <laughs> Miss you laughing. I ain't talking about you this time. <laughs> you know, but it's true. Well, Lord, it's been a week. You know, look at us with COVID-19 and our prayer request. Lord, it's been six months. Please, Jesus, fix it. Look at what's going on with racism. Lord, please fix it. But some of that delay might be spiritual warfare, but some of it might be we ain't fasting. Mm -mm, we're not praying. The word says it, that some things only come by fasting, right? Amen. We're not doing our part, but we want him to answer while we eating everything we want to eat. Corn, dogs, pizza, <laughs> barbecue, chicken watermelon, whatever your, your passion is. And the Lord is saying, turn down your plate. I really need y'all to fast today. 
Turn down your plate. I don't know if he's going to tell us about lotion. That's between you and the Lord. If he tells you to put lotion on. But he's telling us, turn down your plate. And we're not doing it. Okay? So we have to do our part. And we have to recognize that, like my, my godfather used to say, Bishop Scott, he used to say, delay is not necessarily denial. Amen. It's not. we got to trust him. You know? He's the one to tell me there's three answers. Yes, no, and wait. Sometimes we got to wait. You know, we're all excited trying to get reopened and make sure we have everything in place to reopen. But this time, we got to wait for whatever reason. He has us, we, he has us waiting. Um, so Daniel had been fasting. Daniel had been praying for three weeks. No answer. He didn't stop. He didn't get up after 72 hours and say, well, I guess the answer is no. Let me go on ahead. And what he was, thank you, Lord, what he was fasting and praying about was on behalf of the people. He was interceding. If you go online onto our website, read the prayer from last week. That's straight from Daniel. That's the prayer he was praying for his people that we chose to pray for everyone last week. He was interceding for the people, waiting for an answer, and also waiting for an answer to the visions that he was having because they were scaring him. Okay? That's how long he waited. So some of us, even though um, we have an on-the-way delay, we still got to recognize it's still on the way. It's just an on-the-way delay. Just kind of like, well, Lord, you heard me. We're going to do this again tomorrow. On the way delay. If God's saying, turn down that plate till evening, till, till sundown, or however he leads you, turn it down. Okay? Get up the next day. Let him lead you. If he's saying, turn off that TV, turn off Facebook, don't do social media, let him lead you and make sure that you let him touch you and show you he's real. Thank you, Lord. All that wasn't written to God be the glory. But the main thing we have to realize is that he hears us and he answers. He's heard us and he's answered us. The other thing, the other reason that I believe that God has us um, learning about touch is that I, I read about a couple of examples about what happens when God touches us. Hmm. When God touches us, when God touches us, when we touch God, when we're in touch um, so to speak. So I was reading in Luke about leprosy. And I found out that when Jesus touched some men, leprosy left. Yes. Did y'all read that? Mm -hmm. When Jesus touched some men, leprosy left. They were touched by Jesus. And the next thing I read about, I read about some blind eyes. I found out that when Jesus touched blind eyes, they could see again. Did you know about it? They could see. I said, okay, Lord, so you don't touch skin? You've touched eyes? I get it. But what about the ears? Did you know that when Jesus touched deafness, it could hear again? Good God, I'm sorry. I'm getting excited. <laughs> when Jesus touched deaf ears, <laughs> they could hear again. Blind eyes. You remember when the guy could see again and he started comparing the men to trees? Because before he could, <laughs> before he could touch, but he couldn't see. But it was something about Jesus touching his eyes that he could compare to, to, to what he touched to what he could now see. That's what I read about being touched by Jesus. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, there was even a part of the body that was replaced and restored. Y'all remember when the soldier's ear was cut off? Yes. You remember? Peter was acting up. He cut off the soldier's ear. He had a little bit of a temper issue. And Jesus, I love how Jesus did it. He took the ear, put it back on the soldier. Here you go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about his behavior. He put the ear back on. <laughs> Only Jesus. Yes. And, and I believe the ear worked. No it didn't say the ear fell back off. No ER. Right. No sutures. No ER. No anesthetic, just, I'm sorry about him. He Sometimes, <laughs> here you go, here's your ear, okay? <laughs> Y'all imagine it now, right? But it works again. That's how my imagination works. That's what he gave us. And so I thank God for the power of his touch. And, and then I realized, um, and that was actually yesterday, I was reading through this, and I realized there was a paralytic, and I believe that his friends lowered him down, right, to get him healed. Do you realize that he was in a bed that they lowered him down in? Did y'all realize that the paralytic, not only did he get up and walk, but he took his bed with him? Yes. That's the power of the touch. touch. Yes. That's what I'm talking about, yes. okay? That's what I'm talking about. As a matter of fact, and this is what relates to now, um, the bleeding stopped. The bleeding stopped because 
the young lady touched the hem of Jesus' garment. Uh, so I found out that uncontrolled bleeding can stop when we have the touch of Jesus. Uh, the uncontrolled bleeding stopped. The woman didn't even touch Jesus' hand. She didn't even touch his person. She just, she touched the hem of his garment. That's it. Just the peep, what he was wearing was it? Now that's anointing. Mm -hmm. That's overflow. What he was when he said, wait a minute, someone touched me. The disciples said, oh, well, Lord, you know, the, the crowd, they, no, 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 no. I felt virtue go out. That's right. I felt healing go out. Yes. That's the power of the touch. So, so, so during this time of disappointment and, and during this time of frustration, this time when we have all these right. questions, this time of what in the world is going on, we have to touch Jesus. That's the answer. We have to touch him. We have to, to stay in touch with him. I had a, a friend of mine, one of my childhood friends, uh, we were on Instagram going back and forth, and she said something about, I said, you know, these are praying times. Yes. She said, yeah, but it's also time for action. I said, oh, don't get that twisted. <laughs> it's time for action, but I'm saying we have to pray in advance of and in addition to whatever action we're taking. Yes. So, see, some of us, we get so angry, we forget to ask God, how do we fix this, Jesus? Uh, what is the solution, Lord? How do we answer this, God? We don't go to him. We just take the matters into our own hands, okay? Um, doesn't mean that God has nothing for us to do. He does, but we cannot do it successfully without his touch, Jesus. Yes. We have to follow what he's telling us to do. Uh, another friend of mine, a newer friend of mine said, you know, Jenny, I'm seeing how people are saying this and saying that, but they ain't doing that. So we're seeing extremes, right? We're, we're seeing extremes. Um, but what I told him is, again, we still have to have his touch, even for God to touch us to move us forward, okay? It has to be about his touch. We'll be amazed at what happens when, when he touches a mouth that never spoke before. Yeah. We'll be amazed at what happens when he touches ears that refuse to listen. We'll be amazed by that. So we have to recognize that it has to be about his touch. Uh, so many of us, thank you, Tiga, she's on it. Uh, so many of us uh, don't realize that um, it's all about his touch. And so we're saying, well, Lord, why are they not listening? Ask the Lord to touch him. God, why aren't they speaking up? Ask the Lord to touch him. Lord, in the streets, why is there still bleeding not stopping? Ask the Lord to touch. We have to. We have to touch. Uh, we noticed here, like we said, the bleeding has stopped. But what I read about, and this may gross you out, I don't care. It was a healing moment. Um, but Jesus went by someone and he put his spit on their tongue. Uh -huh. And the next thing you know, they... Read about it. Mark 7, 33. He put his spit on their tongue. And they can speak. Anointing. Now, I'm not trying to do that. My okay. Thank you, Lord. Don't worry. I hear your Holy Spirit. I hear your Holy Spirit. But this is why we can't neglect the touch of the Lord, especially not now. We need deaf ears to hear. We need muted mouths to speak. We need blind eyes to see. But it has to come through and under and by his touch. Even greater than that, what's going on down here on earth, um, the reminder for all and the realis realization for some that Black Lives Matter, uh, all of these struggles that we're having, even with um, COVID-19, the other thing about his touch is what about our souls? Sometimes we get so caught up in, in the momentum of what's going on, we're not thinking about where we're going when we leave here. We're not realizing when we came into 2020, I don't think any of us saw this. Amen. We didn't see that there would be this much death right at the door as soon as we came in with COVID-19. I think everybody in here and on here can attest to somebody who had died from COVID-19. But to God be the glory because of his touch. Now we're testifying about people that have been healed from COVID-19 and people who have overcome COVID-19, right? When we came in to 2020, I don't think we thought all this would be going on with black lives. You know, this is almost like, it doesn't even seem real. Every morning we wake up, yes. it feels like a movie. Like, is that really happening on those levels in those places? But what I found out is, is something about that touch, okay? 
that's been missing. So today, my prayer is that we, we do get to touch him, that we get in touch with him if we're not already in touch. Because what I've realized is that if anyone can relate to our struggles, if anyone can understand what we're going through, it's Jesus. Yes. Do we not think he cares? He cares. He's been trying to touch us, but we keep ducking and hiding and running. Okay, he gets close and we get scared or we don't want to give up the life we're living. Mm -hmm. He's trying to touch us. We keep running. He's like, what? what? And we're running here. If, if any of you, I, last time I think for this minute, <laughs> Sal has kids. He has two little boys. And, and they're, they're typical, right? What are they, two and four? Three. One and three. Y'all know about one and three-year-olds. They run. They run. And people heavy like me or older like me with these knees, I can't catch them. Okay? But it, it seems like that's what Jesus does. We're running. And we're like, wait, he's, wait a minute. I, I'm trying to come over. I got, he's trying to touch us, but we keep running. Sit still and let him touch you, okay? Just stand still and let him touch you. Yeah. All right? Don't, don't be like that. Okay? Now, that, they we won't let them be like that. They're kids. We ran like that, too, when we were kids. We don't remember because we were infants. But I'm sure our parents can tell us. Not me. But, but yes, you did. Yeah. Run and I changed it. Run in front of me. Uh, right. <laughs> right. The, sil the syllabus, uh, the syllable pr um, sentence. That's what I call it. When they give you a syllable, whatever you oh, be it. Yeah. I told you not. So I'm like, can you just... Say the sentence and hit. Come on, let's get this done. You know, the <laughs> syllable spanking. You know what I'm talking about. Okay? God is like, I don't even want to do a syllable spanking. I just want you to sit still and let me touch you. Okay? And as a matter of fact, when I touch you, let me see if you're real, but also let me let me give you everything I offered. The healing, the wholeness, the power. It's right here. Right? He said it. And one thing I found out, Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we're getting ready to close in a little bit. We're getting ready to close and say our prayers. Um, but for those who backslid, um, whatever you did, let them touch you, all right? Mm -hmm. If you curse somebody out, we don't know. Let them touch you. If you've been sleeping around, we don't know. Let them touch you, all right? If you've had a habit, I don't know, getting turned, as the kids say, getting high, whatever, let them touch you. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, we're being real today. Because I think what's happening is, um, y'all think we never did anything. Jesus. But when he touches us. Right. It's the touch. It's the touch. Y'all think we never did nothing. It's the touch. You know, I was realizing that we all have some back in the day witnesses. Oh, yeah. I, I pray that if y'all on Facebook, notice the change. I'm going to be putting all my business out there. But notice the change that the touch made. Okay. And, and, and a couple of things that I went through in my <laughs> cycles, uh, notice that was um, plural, of backsliding, right? I remember one time I was crying, and I had just shared this the other day uh, with Diane, and I was crying, and I was like, oh, Lord, I'm just, I'm the worst. And, you know, the cycle I tell y'all about every Saturday, I sin, so I wouldn't go to church, I wouldn't go to church, so I sin. And I was crying, and the Holy Spirit one day, he said to me, Jenny, stop all the crying and change. That's what he said. Like, let me touch you. Stop crying. Change. If you're really sorry, change. I mean, it made so much sense. It was so clear. I love how God simplifies it. Because yes. a lot of times we're crying, oh, Lord, I'm the worst. Forget. Change. If you're really sorry, change. So he brought me through that segment of life in my backslid and said, well, I backslid again. I did it again. It's, it's a process getting used to his touch and accessing it. And, and this time, though, this time when, when I kept backsliding, I was like, Lord, I'm not worthy. I just can't. I can't go to church, Lord, because I'm so dirty. I just felt dirty. I felt ashamed. I'm just, you know, I felt like I, I'm not worth it. And, and Jesus told me real simply, my blood is what made you worthy. Amen. It's all about his touch. Amen. It's all about his touch. This, this Jenny that you see, brand new. Why? Because of his touch. Amen. Not because of something I did, not because of something I learned, not because of something I knew, but because he touched me. He touched me. And thank you, Holy Spirit. Sal's going to have us sing this song. And it says that he touched me and he made me whole. Yes. Something happened, right? Mm -hmm. When Jesus touches you, there's something that happens. You'll yes. feel it. You'll say something's different. I not only can I not do what I used to do, but I don't even want to do what I used yes. to do. Yes. 
People were saying, well, why don't you do this and why don't you do that anymore? I said, you know what? I actually have peace. I don't even, I don't miss it. You know why? Because his touch is on me. He and I are in touch. So whatever you're doing, wherever you are, if you're in a backslidden state, I got two, two words to remember. One, change. Two words. Remember his touch can change you. And remember his touch is what gives you your worth. Okay? Don't sit there and beat yourself up anymore. Don't sit there and cry. Don't go into depression. Don't get suicidal. I'm the worst. Everybody in here, everybody tuned in has done something. All of us. Yes. That's the word. It says That's we've right. all That's sinned it. and fallen short of the glory of God. If we didn't sin, we wouldn't be down here. We'd be up there singing and dancing by now. Okay? So please, if you don't know the Lord, make sure you give your heart to him today. We're going to have the ensemble come up, and we're going to sing as we close out, and then we're going to have our prayers. The first prayer where we're asking for you to let the Lord touch you, that's actually going to be for those who have never been in touch with the Lord. And we celebrate you today that you're going to get in touch with him by giving him your life, giving your life to Jesus. The second petition is for those who, like me, were, I was in a backslidden state, this is a rededication prayer. And then the last prayer will be a touch prayer. But make sure that this week, this month, this life, you stay in touch with God. Make sure you touch him. But also let him touch you back. Don't keep ducking him. Don't keep shaking him. Stand still and let him touch you. Let him take over so you can enjoy what he has planned for you. The healing he has planned for you. Okay? The power. The care, the every answer you need that thank you, he has planned for you.
knows your name. He knows our name. Thank you so much. If you are not sure that he knows your name, we want you to go ahead and pray this prayer for salvation. Again, we celebrate you today because you're going to let the Lord touch you. You're going to see he's real. And guess what? Because of his touch, you're also going to be real. So go ahead and pray this prayer with us. This is from Romans 10 and 9, New Living Translation. It says, he playing some things. It says, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you for my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the family. Welcome to his touch. If you backslid, you've been away from a while, you've been out of touch with him, pray this prayer of rededication from 1 John 1 and 9. It says, Dear God, we confess our many sins to you. Thank you for your forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for cleansing us from all wickedness. In Jesus' name, amen. And now for the prayer of touch. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you touch us. We thank you that you remain in touch with us even when we're out of touch with you. We thank you that you never leave us and you never forsake us. We thank you that we have touched you and we know you're real. And we pray, God, that you would touch us back and help us to become real to you if we're not. Have mercy on us, Lord, and, and lead us and guide us in all that you want us to do and all that you want us to say. Lord, this prayer of touch for today is that it wouldn't just be for today, that we would feel your touch, Father God, not just in this moment, but for the rest of our lives. Lord, that you would touch COVID-19 and heal it. Lord, that you would touch racism and destroy it. Lord, that you would touch black lives and preserve it, Father God, preserve them. In Jesus' name, and most of all, God, though, that you would touch our souls. For those of us who are not saved still, those who are still running from your touch, God, recover. Please be patient, but recover. Let us be their intercessors today, God, as you draw them back to your touch. In Jesus' name, and also, thank you, Holy Spirit. Help us to always represent your touch as we touch others in Jesus' name. Well, fellowship family, we're touched. <laughs> we are touched, and we're excited about that. If you need a way to stay in touch, you know, somebody had asked if we have membership. We believe in membership to the body of Christ, okay? And we believe in discipleship. We also believe that if you have a need and we can meet it, we're going to meet it. If we don't have what you need, then we're going to find a way to help you to get that need met, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you want to stay in touch, we're very excited about this evening. Ministry Marriages is going to be led by Bishop Bradshaw. We have the Zoom link on our site. Please join in. The um, advertisement went out. It's, it's almost like a little movie that he and his wife put together. Please see it. It's really exciting. And that's at 5. That's from 5 to 7. And we thank God for uh, Derek and Itali and their leadership for our Ministry Marriages and in organizing this. Um, today, this is not up here at the NAACP. We'll have a prayer uh, vigil at Christ Lutheran at 1 o'clock. And also, there will be a youth march at Ridgeview at 2.30. All of that is happening today, to God be the glory. So we have uh, no excuse for keeping, you know, we, we should be teaching, keeping in touch today, okay? Tomorrow, uh, we celebrate children. Remember, they are a reward, even if they're running at one and three, <laughs> or at 30 or 70. <laughs> they are a reward. So we'll celebrate National Children's Day just by giving a shout out on Facebook. We have service next Saturday, the 20th. No evening Bible study. Why? Because we will be celebrating with and for our fathers on Father's Day. June 27th, we hop back to Saturday service and Saturday evening Bible study. The only other thing I want to add, we're excited and prayerful. July 4th is supposed to be our first Saturday back in the building. Everything will be in place. And we'll also have our first communion Saturday. So we're excited about that. Yes, so please follow us on Facebook uh, to keep up and YouTube and our website. Uh, we thank you for joining us. There is our our website address as well as if the Lord lays it on your heart to give a gift the top is the cash app the bottom is the PayPal 
please know that every Monday we pray for you and we praise God for you and your giving, whether it is financial or in time or in support or in prayer, and we're excited about what God is doing in your life. Be blessed, keep in touch, and we'll see you next Saturday, if not this evening. Thank you.